Matthew Stuckey here from Verity Baptist Church Philippines, just giving you a uh, two-week missionary update. Um, I didn't have one last week. I actually got pretty sick last week, and uh, we had men that filled in to preach the sermons. And so, um, you know, it's I, it's the sickest I've ever been since I've been here in the Philippines, at least. It's been a long time since I've been this sick, but I'm definitely doing better now at this point. Um, no signs that it was related to COVID at all, uh, but just kind of your normal sickness, I guess. And I think here in the Philippines, as we do a lot of soul winning during the summertime, it's the summertime and not the winter where you got to take care of your body and where viruses come because obviously being out, being, being out in the heat will really drain you. And so all of us need to make sure we take care of our bodies and stuff out here. We've had a lot of people at our church sick recently. But anyways, two weeks ago, we had a total of 101 salvations, just got over the total of 100 salvations. Got 127 salvations uh, this past week between our ministries. So we've been able to get over 100, which is is good. That's what we're trying to, to keep going. And, um, you know, this coming week, we do have a soul winning marathon on Saturday. We have all day soul winning marathon every Saturday in Manila with lunch provided by church. But this Saturday is a holiday. It's Labor Day. And so in, in the previous years we've been here, uh, Labor Day did not fall on a Saturday. And so we did all day soul winning marathons. But this is kind of a big though because we're, we're kind of reaching toward the end of the peak season for soul winning it's starting to get uh very hot and also we're going to be hitting a lot more rain coming up soon maybe not in may but you'd expect in june you'll start to hit the rain probably um so i remember three years ago it's kind of the anniversary of our, our one week soul winning marathon um missions trip the first one that we did out here and it was just brutally hot. It takes time to get adjusted to. And I think every single year it's it's starting to, you know, we're like, oh man, you know, when we were sewing on Sunday, we're like, wow, it's really hot, I'm drained. Probably need to start bringing more water and make sure we're more prepared because we have had a lot of people sick recently, not just my family, but other people as well. But anyways, things are going well overall. Um, we do have a lot of changes I'll cover here in a second, but just to quickly let you know the sermons I preached, uh, we're going through Romans, and I did the, the first half of Romans 15. We have three more sermons in Romans, and then we'll be done. Uh, and the false philosophies I covered on um, communism. And I didn't cover it comprehensively, but I covered, but I kind of preached against their idea of equality and what they mean by that. Because, of course, I believe there's no respect of persons with God. However, we're created differently. And that's something that you, we need to keep in mind. So I talked about that. I'll probably preach on communism in the future, and I'm trying to educate myself more about it because we're coming to a communist world, whether people realize it or not. And it's it's not just in a few isolated countries. This is really kind of happening all over the world. We've seen that the last couple of years, or the last year and a half. And so I preached about that, and I talked about that, and uh, we're done with Hosea. So what I did on Wednesday is I covered the Battle of Mactan, which we had the 500-year anniversary that's coming up in a couple of days. And it's the battle where Ferdinand Magellan was actually killed in the Philippines. I grew up being taught in the U.S. that Ferdinand Magellan uh, circumnavigated the globe. Like, he traveled around the globe. But he was actually killed in the Philippines. And so I talked about that battle, and I showed how Christianity existed far before Ferdinand Magellan was here. And so we have to understand that the Word of God has gone out throughout the entire world. There's safe people everywhere. But then it did become a Catholic country, which is actually a good thing for us as Christians because it's more receptive here than other countries in Asia. As for the changes in our ministry, I wanted to quickly cover. So um, things have been really busy here. And, um, you know, I, I, my family just moved on Sunday. After soul winning, we moved to Pampanga. This is, has always been in our long-term plans. My wife is from the province of Pampanga. So obviously we have two churches in Manila and in Pampanga. So what we've been doing for a long time is basically um, on Saturdays is where we've been having services in Pampanga. I've been traveling down in the morning and then traveling back, you know, after back-to-back -back church services, soul winning, and getting back at nighttime. We've had other people at our church that have joined us for that. And so the, the schedule is going to be kind of flipped though. And so now on Sundays, my family is going to be traveling up to Metro Manila back-to-back -back services, soul winning, and then whenever we have activities and stuff like that, then we're going to be traveling back and getting back on Sunday night. So the Pampanga services will stay on Saturday. 
Manila service services will stay on Sunday. The one change in Metro Manila, which I believe is actually going to be a good change for our ministry, is that the midweek service is going to become more of a rotating preaching schedule. There's very little traffic on Sundays going uh, to Manila and then back. We're not going to have many problems. But the midweek service, it would be, you know, four hours to get there, four hours back. And so we've decided to make that a uh, rotating preaching schedule. I believe that's a good thing, though, because we have a lot of guys that are very capable of preaching. And, you know, kind of my idea um, in the back of my head of how to get future church plants started is, you know, potentially to have a rotating preaching schedule at various locations. Because there's a lot of people here in the Philippines that are looking for a church. And we have a lot of men at our church that are very capable of preaching. And that's the model we used to start in Pampanga. I was only preaching half the sermons then. We had a rotating schedule. So on Wednesdays, we're going to have a rotating schedule. We have several men that want to become pastors one day. And uh, they're going to cover the midweek service. It's still going to be live streamed. Right now, the time is kind of oscillating due to the, the curfew and stuff like that. We're trying to abide by the laws of the government. And so 5 p.m. will be the church service this Wednesday. But that could be changed uh, a little bit later once the curfew is gone. As for Pampanga, so it's good for Manila because these guys are getting a chance to preach, and that will help if we do end up starting future church plants, which is kind of the vision that I have and the goal that I have. And it's good practice for people that want to be pastors one day. They do, they do a great job. And so it's good also for Pampanga because we're going to be able to add a midweek church service. And so it's going to take a little bit of time to um, adjust and figure out um, exactly uh, the location and, and stuff like that, but that's what we're planning to do. We're also able to add a lot more soul winning times here in Pampanga. Just in uh, five hours, um, we've got a lot of people from our church are going to be going soul winning in a park nearby, and so we're excited to, to be able to join for that. And so we're going to be able to have a lot more soul winning times and fellowship activities. And the church in Manila has grown quite a bit, and there's um, many people that are going soul winning, you know, a lot during the week, and people willing to volunteer. We just had about 10 people, a couple families, and a few other people that are planning to, to move right by our church. So that's going to be really great. It's going to be really helpful. And so the church in Manila is doing, is doing awesome. And the church in Pampanga is doing great as well. Um, we're, we're, but it is a much smaller church at this point. And so uh, you know we're going to be able to add that midweek service, add extra soul winning. So we're excited about that. So I think it's a good thing for, for both of our churches. It's a good thing for our family. It's, it's the plan that we've always... Um, had, but we're still very committed. We're completely committed to both churches. We're going to be up every single Sunday with uh, preaching the sermons, and you know nothing's going to change in that regards. And so things are going um, well here. We just ask you to continue to um, you know pray for our church. Restrictions are tough with the government, and it kind of changes from week to week. Um, I guess kind of the good side effect is we have had a lot of people move close to our church because you know it's hard to tell what's going to happen with the laws of the government. Travel is a lot more expensive now than it used to be if you uh, rent vehicles. Um, so, you know, things are, de are definitely more difficult now. So just pray for our church. And uh, we're getting through kind of the, the home stretch of the peak time for soul winning. It's the three-year anniversary of our, our first missions trip that we had here. And so things are going really well as a church. But just continue to pray for our ministry. And thank you and God bless.